Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. I'd like to lead off uh, with a question that Scott brought up, which is, what, if anything, should we we'd be thinking about while, say, doing a Taiji form? And um, so this is actually kind of a, a multi-layered question. And it's, there's not one exact answer that fits in all situations. But uh, the, uh, the, the real short answer is that you should be both thinking and non-thinking at the same time and alternately. But uh, that gets kind of, that's kind of glib. So the, uh, let's, let's break it down. So what we're going for, a thing that I've been emphasizing a lot lately is body, mind, spirit integration. And that means that we're getting the eye of flesh, the eye of mind, the eye of spirit, all able to interrelate to coordinate in a way that that permits a an optimum uh, ability and and the uh, chance to move into an expanded state of awareness so that you're able to attune to uh, abilities that uh, that you might not ordinarily be able to get a hold of. So um, you know. Since our default mode in the and with regard to our minds is sort of a an ongoing chatter. In fact, psychologists call it the default mode network part of the brain that just keeps updating your personal narrative on a moment by moment basis. So whenever you're whenever it's not task oriented, whenever you're not, you're, whenever you're not thinking about something and doing something directly, you are it takes over and it basically keeps track of, of what's going on in, in your world. And it also kind of predicts the future, looks for danger, tries to you know figure out uh, what went wrong. Uh, and it does all these things computing away uh, as a way of keeping busy. And uh, it has sort of a, a survival uh, impetus that it's something that you know millions of years of evolution have kind of steered us in this direction because the alert ones, the ones who were anticipating danger, were the ones who survived and got to pass on their uh, their DNA. So we have this tendency toward being a little bit hyper vigilant as humans. We tend to be thinking, you know, looking in terms of what could go wrong. And since we are awash in stimulation, our attention is getting yanked this way and that all day. We uh, it's, it's real easy to feed that anxiety, that that anxiousness, and consequently, it the brain is still is trying to solve the riddle. And uh, what we're trying to do in Taiji Chuan is kind of take a little break from that, move out of the default mode network and shift into an expanded capacity to process information. And that means more body awareness, the eye of flesh, more awareness, the capacity to think clearly and quickly, but also going beyond that into a super conscious state where we're able to process information without thinking. And thinking something, you know, um, you know, narrowly defining it here. Some people define thinking as any action of the mind or the brain is thinking, and and that's a little too general, I think, for to be useful. I like to think of it in terms of the conscious mind, the ability to know that you know, and to know that you're you're engaged in activity and representational thought that is thinking this is kind of like that and, and it's nothing like this other thing over here and blah 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 so you you're creating um symbolic representation you're putting stuff into words and you're labeling it naming it 
and stacking it into boxes so you can find it later. And that's the thinking part. And that's really cool because we humans are really good at that and we like to do it a lot. And, and uh, it helps us figure out all kinds of cool stuff. However, it becomes a trap if we can't get out of the thinking part. And it costs a lot of people a lot of upset. They get, uh, you know, they, it takes over. So the ability to control your nervous system, to learn to actually control your brain, control your nervous system, is the function of this superconscious state. That is where we move beyond the, where we're part of it, where the, we're just part of that, that nervous system, we're doing what, we're, whatever it tells us, and we're moving to a point where we can actually move things around. We operate it, you know, kind of like a, like we would a computer or whatever. And that means that there is a state of awareness that is beyond that thinking state. And we want to be able to go there, but not get stuck there either. Not get stuck into no mind where you're unable to process information, where you're unable to notice and evaluate danger when it comes and or to be able to to plan ahead or whatever so going back to the question about what do we do when we're doing a form is we are thinking because there's this things are changing every moment so there's an awareness of that but we're not getting hung up on the representational thought even though we can go there anytime we want so, you know, I'll say, okay, you, know, you feel your wrist. So what are we doing? We're, the conscious mind is going into feeling mode, which then activates the eye of flesh, the, act, the body awareness. And, but we're also bringing conscious awareness to it. So it's not just happening. Body's not just a happening thing. It just, it's, we're able to actually guide it. So we say, oh yes, I am moving my arm in such a way as that I'm, kind of reaching with my wrist actually feel my wrist and i'm reaching out there and at the same time i'm feeling my elbow and what's uh these are all fairly complex and nuanced ways of thinking because there's minute changes that are occurring every moment with that but we don't stop and and convert that into language we don't convert that into rational thought it's like, oh yeah, I feel that. And I know what that feels like and I can go there. I have a memory of what that, of that feeling and I can recreate that feeling. And therefore I'm able to access that ability even under stress, which whenever you're in rational thinking, whenever you're, you're trying to convert stuff analytically, you may not have that. In fact, you most likely will not have that. You will, you know, you think, what am I supposed to do now is, you know, your thought. And, and no matter how much you've practiced your Kung Fu, if you haven't done it on that super conscious level, chances are you're going to freeze up whenever it's a, uh, when it's important to remember. You want to be able to instantly shift into that mode and be able to process information without thinking you're able to it's you know I, I liken it to be able to shift from the conscious mind which is like an abacus and and the super conscious which has the capacity of going all the way to like a uh, a quantum computer and so there's just there, there's no comparison we don't get to the quantum computer until we we have to earn our way to get there. We have to get so comfortable with the uh, with the process. This goes back to doing our Tai Chi form, being able to think, not think, be able to move into non-objective awareness without losing yourself. I know some people who. You know, they think that their Taiji is at, at its best if they 
oh, I got through the whole form and I just, just, I don't even remember doing it. It just, you know, I just floated through it. And it's like, okay, you know, that's, that's cool. Um, but what is that, what is that doing for you? What did you learn from that, from that experience? You know, whereas, you know, wherever I, anytime I tackle a Taiji form or any kind of thing is like, you know, it's like the first time I'm like, Oh, you know, what, what's this? What's this thing? Oh, what, what, what's going on here? And I, you know, I, even if I'm not converting it into language, I'm not explaining it to myself, I'm feeling it and it's being processed at, at a very deep level. And, um, You know, the brain is, is very much involved with all this. And we're moving from a very tiny part of the brain, which is the default mode network, and moving into more of a whole brain coherence by doing that. We're learning how to control that, which is way beyond the ability to think rationally. And that's kind of kind of neat. That's where we get into the fun stuff. So we are moving into that, and that requires a different way of, you know, of playing with that. And I'm not sure how much we can get into that, but I'll just touch on it briefly. And that is the whole brain becomes coherent. That is, it's things are talking to each other, parts of your brain are talking to each other in a way which is not even recognized by most scientists as possible. Most most scientists will tell you, oh yeah, well, the you know, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, they can't really communicate except through the corpus callosum, and which is a trunk of nerves, which, you know, runs through the center of your brain. And, and so it's kind of, you know, this, this very, um, uh, it's like a traffic jam there of thoughts that go through that. Whereas whenever you move into this whole brain coherence, the brain starts functioning at a very fast level. Brain waves can go from very, very slow to very, very fast. And uh, whenever you're moving into a highly coherent state and you're moving into, you're doing it in what's called a gamma state, which is it's where your brain is operating very fast, but highly coherently, then you are able to communicate in, it's not limited to the linear pathways that that your brain ordinarily takes. It, you know, things are jumping to other locales as, uh, as they are needed. Parts of your brain are talking to other parts that just don't happen in that normal state. So going back to Scott's question, what do we think about? We approach it each moment, it's new. And your feet, you're shifting between feeling and, and recognizing what, what it is you're doing, what you want to do next. There's some part of you which is able to perceive the next movement uh, in your like your, the peripheral vision of your mind without like worrying about you know what you're what you're doing next. But you're able to do that. And then you, oh yeah, you you're Ooh, you know, you, you feel it, and it seems to be doing it by itself. But the um, reality is, you're doing it. You're learning how to do it. And owning that, that voluntary control is, I think, I consider a major part of our Kung Fu. So before we go on, uh, any questions or thoughts on this? Yeah, that makes sense. Scott, you like that? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Rick. When I'm doing my section in the mornings, when I'm move when I'm exploring my body and moving to different portions of my body, yeah. I sometimes attempt to help the chi along by giving directions along the lines of healing, health, repair, regenerate. Do you think that would be helpful or am I well, cool? Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, if it's working for you, it's helpful. There we go. You know, the, so far uh, so good. You know, I, my, 
the principle that I, I follow is that the E leads the chi. And so the E is, is kind of the, what I'm talking about in the superconscious state, okay? So it's the part of your mind, which is going beyond the reactive part, the, 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 uh, the, the monkey and, and the, the E is the horse. And so the, you know, the, the calm, steady presence. And so the E leads the chi. So whenever you say, oh yeah, I want to feel that, I want to feel that in my, my left knee. And so you can, you know, by thinking or just touching your left knee and just allowing your awareness to go there will bring the chi there. So there's, there's that. So that's, uh, I think as you play with it, you get, um, you crank up enough chi and it knows what to do. This is what Master, uh, Master Yang used to say. It's like, you know, the chi knows a lot, lot better than you where it needs to go. So, uh, so you kind of create this coherent state you get out of your own way, you know, you get out, you, you know, unkink the hose as best you can. And then you then say, okay, I'm going to crank it up to 11. And then, you know, she do your stuff. You know, I think that's the, uh, uh, I think that's, that's, that's another way of looking at it. I also, while I'm doing that, if I'm trying to get it someplace, but I feel it someplace else, I'll listen and ask myself, okay, what are, what are you trying to tell me here and how can I help? Fabulous. So yeah, so good, thank okay, you. That's perfect. that's perfect, that's perfect. There's a conversation going on you know, with the body, a conversation going on with the energy. And, and when you do that, then it's like, you know, everybody gets along nice, you know? <laughs> everybody goes into resonance. Cool, Scott. Uh, sorry, more of a te uh, technical question, but so where is gamma on the, so gamma is above beta then, or? Yes. So you have, uh, you go from very slow to, which uh, is ordinarily called delta. Right. And you think of it, you know, roughly, and, and different people will have different numbers, different frequencies attached to these, but think of zero to four, and that's usually associated with like, sleep or deep, deep meditation, or basically the brain is slowing way, way down, zero to four cycles per second. So that's, it's, it's not pulsing very fast at all. And then above that, we have theta, which is characteristics of like deep meditation, relaxation and, and, and the like, but it's still, a, it's like four to eight cycles per second. So it's still pretty slow. Uh, they would get into alpha waves, which I think a lot of Tai Chi gets done because that's sort of, we've slowed the brain down, but it's not, not going to sleep kind of slow. It's, and we're also in uh, the, we start, if we can, if we're doing it, say in nature or something like that, we start to resonate with the earth. We start getting involved in, in like the pulse of, of the earth with that, you know, and there's the Schumann resonance which is uh, something which it's the, it's 7.883, I think, cycles per second. And it's, uh, it's happening, you know, there's, there's, there's this pulse, which is basically the energy bouncing between the planet and the, uh, the, I think it's the ionosphere. And so there's this, it's created by lightning strikes around the world, which kind of beat the, uh, beat our atmosphere like a drum. And it averages out to about 7.88 cycles per second. That's the Schumann resonance. And so whenever we tune into that, you know, it's kind of a, it's a, like a low alpha state and we're kind of, we're kind of like feeling like, you know, yeah, baby, you know, we're, we're kind of in the groove with the earth kind of a thing. And that's, uh, and that's cool too. But then we get up, uh, uh, above 14, 14 to, and it varies sometimes, some people say 30, some people say 40, but uh, cycles per second for the beta. 
And that's our ordinary thinky thinky mind. And our conscious mind is, is, is our rational representational logic mind is, is happening at that and that beta thing. That's the, and people oftentimes you'll hear like beta bad and it's not, it's just your normal thinking mind. And it's something that is uh, the more coherent you can be in beta. That means your brain is, is you know, it's, it's thinking pretty quickly. But it's um, um, it, it has its own characteristic. There's an alertness to beta. So you want to, you know, there is a, you know, if you're driving, it's not a bad idea in, you know, like heavy traffic to have that kind of alertness going on there. Whenever you're cruising on the highway, you got it on, you know, in the in the power glide, and you're you're sitting back, then you can kind of settle back down, slow down the brain a bit. But the above the above say 40 recycle per second. And 40 seems to be about a sweet spot for a lot of a lot of the gamma stuff. And then the brain starts to take on different qualities. And that's, you know, they discovered it, you know, whenever they're um, um, doing research on these Tibetan monks who would sit outside in in, in the uh, on top of the mountain and then be doused with ice water and uh, would sit there all night in the uh, in sub zero you know sub freezing you know uh, sub freezing temperatures and they would go into a gamma state and they would actually create steam you know with that but they also noticed that when people taking ayahuasca and so it started but also people in uh, like uh, schizophrenic states and things like that too. So it's not just, it just means that the brain is moving very fast. How it manifests is uh, a large, largely dependent on how well you can control this fast moving thing. So like get hopping in a Lamborghini and you're, you know, you, you, you gotta kind of build up to the, uh, up to the practice. You have to be able to learn how to operate that vehicle, same thing with a uh, uh, with uh, with your brain moving very fast, and so by going into that superconscious state, we are learning with still with the training wheels on how to how to deal with that. You're shaking your head. What? Uh, well, I didn't realize you were going to go into a whole thing, and I had you still on gallery. It's okay. Ah, okay. So. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, that's that's uh, that's that's the gamma thing. So we're learning how to function in this new way. But in that superconscious state, we're learning how to function at a higher level of operation. And so going back to what do I think about? If you are in that state, you're able to handle all that stuff. You're able to to be in you know, a very peaceful, serene state at the same time, you're handling all kinds of mischief as it comes up and, and that's all right, you know, all right. I did a, uh, a demonstration recently, you know, in front of a large group, a large audience of martial artists and, and I, my energy was very high and I had to, I was like, you know, really cranked up, but there's all kinds of challenges that I had to, to deal with the, the condition of the stage, you know, the fact that I have this audience out there, I'd have to kind of maintain some of that. Plus I'm going through this fairly complex form and I'm, you know, doing lots of cool stuff with the chi and stuff like that. And so you got to be able to, to, to handle the variables that are going on. And that requires some thought that requires being able to think, but it, you know, just don't get stuck in it. Anybody else? All good, good, good. Producer says move on. Okay, so how about we stand up and we're going to do uh, uh, a little more exploration into Anjin. So I want to take that in and uh, we'll start off playing a little bit with the uh, Fong and Sung and then we'll get into um, expressing Anjin in a different way. Okay. 
So let's get the three pillars going. Feel the balls of your feet. Feel that contact with the earth. Allow your weight to settle over that so that you're using your the balls of your feet as your point of orientation. Knees unlocked. Reach for the crown of your head. Lengthening the spine. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Relax your lower back, drop your sacrum. Feel the poles in opposition between your coccyx, your tailbone, and the crown of your head, lengthening. And by doing that, by opening the, lengthening the spine like that, you are unkinking the hose. Your spine goes through a lot of downward pull all day. Gravity is pulling down on it. And so there's compression happening. And what we're doing is we're reversing that. We're lengthening. creating space at the base of the skull, which allows for things to operate more smoothly. The spirit of vitality is released and it's channeled through the body. And push away from the earth as if you're kind of push your head against the ceiling and then Ah, uh, settle down and release down and get very, very soon. Heal soon toi, that your, your hip joints are very relaxed and allows you, you're taking the weight into your legs. But passively, you're releasing down, there's a yin support. Reach for the elbows opening the shoulder joints through your fingers. You reach with the index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. <laughs> we'll start big, we get, get really exaggerate the physicality. So to create a safe space for the energy to come in. So push away from the earth and sink very soon. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Feel that extension, the fong, F-A-N-G, fong, reach of the fingers. Open your shoulder blades, feel the space between the shoulder blades, reaching out. And push away from the earth and sink, reach down with the elbows, down with the hands, the wrists. So notice we've initiated the process here, moving into a super conscious state. There's much more gap between thoughts. There's a sense of wholeness that pervades the whole system. You feel the energy 
as we move into more and more of an insubstantial state, the energy becomes more and more pronounced. So let's do it again, push away from the earth and sink. Elbows, reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Reach with the arms, feel that gap between your shoulder blades connecting. Feel the fong, the, the extension. And notice that the energy is different with that extension. You push away from the earth and sink and elbows, wrists. Feel the resistance of the air, of the space as you press down. Pivot on your right heel to the ball, set the knee, push away and sink. So you're sinking, really feeling the sung in that right leg. Notice that your left leg is freed up, becomes very empty. Now you step forward with the left foot. You feel your back leg is still the substantial one. Now we're going to feel the ball of the left foot and push the left knee forward. And push away from the earth. Coming up. And sink. Reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers or the wrist, yeah, the elbows, reach with the fingers. Feel that extension, that reaching, you're reaching to connect. Feel yourself connecting with the space around your arms. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, push away from the earth and coming up, And as you uh, release down, sink in, you reach down with the elbows, down with the wrists, very slowly and feel as if you're pushing down on a beach ball in a swimming pool. Feel the resistance as you do that. Continue to reach for the crown of your head. Feel the ball of the left foot, push the left knee forward, sink into that. And allow the water pressure to push the ball forward. For the ball of the right foot, Set the right knee and push away, coming up and sink. Reaching down, pressing down. So this is the anjin, this is the yin part here. Everything is going down. Arms, body, everything is going down. So this is bringing that pressure down. Now feel the ball of the left foot, push the left knee out and push away. And sink. As you do that, reach out with the hands. Fong. You're reaching. Feel the yin expressing itself through your arms. So we're gathering the chi. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Push. Coming. We're gathering the energy. And 
and compressing, right? Focusing it, directing, still plugging into the big G, feeling the energy of the earth and the sky moving through, feel it coming through the balls of your feet, coming down through the crown of your head. Revolve the left foot, set the left knee, push away and sink and bong, reach. So we have your anjin, your push, the push of no push. Now we're gonna make that smaller. So this time, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and don't push away, just Release down and sink into the quad. Feel yourself getting very soon. Now that you familiarize yourself with that feeling, just the very soon left ball, set the left knee, soon into that left quad, sinking down and reaching up. So here we're splitting the energy. The body's going down, the arms are going up. Even smaller, right ball, set the right knee, sink. Same energy, just make it into a smaller movement. Left ball, set the left knee, sink and reach. Smaller still, right ball, Right knee, sink. Feel your elbows, feel your wrists pressing down. The movement has gotten very small now. Left ball, set the left knee, sink. Push, oh, no push. Now, even smaller so that you're Hard even noticing that you're shifting between front and back. So left ball, set the left knee, sink, and press down. Feel that same energy compressing into a much smaller space. Front leg, release into that, and even smaller this time. So there is no apparent motion, but you're feeling the shifting substantiality. Your left leg is substantial now. Now we're gonna to shift to the right and sink into the right and now the left leg is substantial and you reach out. Even smaller. Because there's no movement this time. Your left leg substantial, pressing down, feeling the energy as you press down, the compression, and then forward. Bong. This time you're gonna do it, but even Smaller, smaller than no movement. Feel the potentiality and express the energy without any physicality. Other than just the fact that you've, you've got a body and you're holding a position in space, but you're directing the energy and do that a few times, kind of circle that through so that you're feeling the energy and down and out. And just feel that going through multiple times. Now step up with your right foot. Same thing here, you're feeling the jin now. We're feeling the on jin with no movement. 
It's like a wave coming through. Down and out. You're pressing down. Just using your intention and out. Letting the chi do the work for you. Hands down. Just allow yourself to go into a neutral state, but be aware of how much energy is circulating throughout your body mind right now. Step in. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> and disappear the chi. Empty out. Take a seat, please. Hmm. How'd that go? Wonderful. <laughs> it was super cool when you said the last moment, you know, not the last moment, but feel the potentiality. And it was, there was a second when I felt both the potentiality and the expression, like almost simultaneously, which was Wonderful. very exciting. And then I was cycling, like you said, and then I'm like, oh, but my shoulders hurt right here and right here, but it's going through. And then I realized, no, it's only going through to here. <laughs> <laughs> so I reconnected Great. to my claw and suddenly things felt better. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Valerie. I think Adam missed the wrong class. <laughs> Who did? Uh, Adam. Remember how he's always asking for superpowers? Uh huh. <laughs> he missed it. He, he missed, missed it. The class. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Wonderful. That is the way to superpowers. You know, whatever gin you're working on, you know, that's the secret right there. You know, you start big. You connect the dots and then you make it smaller, smaller, smaller until it looks like you ain't doing nothing. And then it's, it's magic. You're able to do magic tricks. I've always heard that the smaller the movement, the slower the movement, the higher level you are. And that's something we can all do we get something we can all you know <laughs> all, all it requires is the will to do it you know they they say oh yeah this is important to me i will do this thing and i will develop this skill because it's really cool and then you do it <laughs> but it uh it, it does require requires kung fu 
prayer is going in and just, you know, kind of practicing that. And just because you do it once doesn't mean you can do it again. But you did it once, so you probably could figure it out again. So, you know, but you need to, you know, to be able to to be able to do it instantly. That's that's practice. Cool. Scott. Oh, just you've been telling us to part with our fingers for so many years that when I um, when you were telling saying reach with all your fingers, I realized I was only reaching with my pointer fingers because habit. So that was that was interesting observation there. Interesting. Good. Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with reaching with the index fingers because that's the you know that's that's the lead dog in the on the sled, but it's uh, um, when you can get everybody involved, eventually, you know, you can, you can develop that ordinary, when you're first starting out, these guys are a distraction, you know, to the coherence. But as you, as you start to, to develop your coherence and get really comfortable with it over years, you know, then you say, hey, what about the rest of the guys? Cool. Um, uh, anybody else? Okay. All right. Uh, so the, you know, if for anybody who's watching the video and just uh, wondering what the hell just happened, the, uh, the, uh, and we're playing with Anjin, which is you know, one of the four basic jins there. In the previous couple of classes introduced this in some, some more depth. So I encourage you to go back and check that out. Although the exercise we just did stands on its own, but you'll get more, you know, a, a deeper understanding if you go back earlier and, and play around with that. And um, then we can take the Anjin, and you can make it into even a very small movement that you can apply in all kinds of situations. So it's a, uh, a, uh, but we start big and don't rush the, don't rush going to the small because you want to get familiar. You know, as Lynn was saying, it's like, oh, you know, you, you notice things, you notice you notice where you're kinking the hose. And so all of us are still, we still got kinks. So start big so you can really identify those kinks, big and slow. And then you can identify the kinks and then make it smaller, smaller, smaller. We kind of accelerated the, 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 the smalling of it you know, here just to be able to kind of compress it into a very short exercise. But it's something that you know you can play with for a long time. Cool. Okay, I think we're going to. Uh, oh, Richard. Yes, I'm. Oh, I just wanted to say two things. First of all, I'm a little distracted because my next door neighbor are having fireworks. Okay. <laughs> we can't I mean, my, do that. My my across my across the street neighbors. Uh -huh. um, and the other thing I wanted to say was, you know, I'm sit I'm sitting through all this, and I'm still getting quite a lot of benefit from what we're doing. Uh, and in fact, I'm finding that uh, I'm finding uh, pretty significant soon into the chair. Um, and it's it's almost more uh, tangible than it is when I'm standing. Nice. So. Nice. Good. Rick. I just wanted to say, Richard, that you may be having external fireworks across the street, but wouldn't it be great if we went across the street and they said, you know, we hear some internal fireworks going across the street too. <laughs> for, them to, for them to call and say, I'm distracting their fireworks show. Right. <laughs> With your internal fireworks. Can you people. settle down over there? <laughs> would, would it be helpful for Richard to send the chi into his legs even though he's not standing on them uh, sure. yeah I, I i'm uh i'm sending the chi into my legs just as though i were standing um, 
you know, I'm, you know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm sinking, I'm rising, I'm turning, I'm moving my, I'm moving my focus uh, back and forth from one foot to the other. So I'm trying to keep everything engaged. Good, good. And, and that's going to help. That's going to, you know, it's going to keep the chi channels moving. Right. You know, and, uh, and that will serve you well when you, when you get the new knees. <laughs> but uh, that's great. Beautiful. Uh, okay, thank you all so much. Love you all. <laughs>